flip it over and you can kind of see what we had. So there's all the messed up kind of messy tape right there. Hey there, Robert John Hadfield from Audio Mover here and I've got a really, what I think is a really interesting cassette repair to show you today. And I'll, I'll see if I can explain what happened here. The, the tape itself came off the spool on the inside of the shell. This is really, really tough to repair. I, I mean, it, it, without opening it up, you have to, you really do need to open it up to get that back on the spool. And, and this shouldn't happen, you know, but, but part of the reason, and I'll show you when we open this up, there's this little gasket that's in there that's, that's kind of put there to prevent that from happening, but it doesn't always work. This kind of thing happens every once in a while. And here at the studio, you know, what we do is we take old audio and videotapes and convert them into digital. And you'll see here, this actually came from a church. That's one of the things that probably the two biggest types of customers that we get here are churches and then government agencies. And we literally do church tapes by the thousands. Anyway, the problem now that we're gonna have with this tape is that there's no screws. This is sealed shut. The, the challenge now is breaking it apart in such a way that we can get it back together. And that isn't always possible. Most of the time we can do it, but sometimes you end up just destroying the shell, which is actually no big deal. Because all you have to do is just get a new shell, put the tape, the, the oxide tape, the reels in a new shell, and it'll work fine. That, we do that, actually. We have, we have boxes of empty shells just for this purpose. So I'm going to show you how, to, how we normally break into a tape like this so that we can make a repair. The first thing that we do is pop out the, the right protector tabs. So on the top of any cassette tape or bottom uh, top, there are these, these little tabs right here. You can kind of see that hopefully in that camera. And what these are, when these are in place, you can actually record over the tape. The purpose for these things is, is to pop it out if you don't want to be able to record over it. And you'll notice that any tape you buy at a, that, that's from a record company, let me pull one out here. Here's a tape from ELO. And you'll see that in this case, those tabs are not there. When you take those tabs out, it makes it uh, impossible to record over. It, it basically signals the tape deck. There's a little, I don't explain it, but there's this little thing that when it closes, pushes down into it, and it signals to the tape deck to not allow it to record over the tape. And so, but for, for our purposes here, the, these holes actually give us a place of leverage where we can start trying to wedge it open. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop out those, the little protect tabs first. And then what we're going to try to do here is, and this is just kind of a <laughs> kind of a barbaric process, is you just get the the screwdriver in there and try to pry it open. Sometimes I actually want to get it started like that and crack it just a little bit so that it loosens it up a tiny bit. You can hear it cracked a little. <coughs> so I'm going to try now to see if we can pry this thing open. And this is, uh, oh boy, this one's going to be tough. Yeah, this is, we're probably going to end up just destroying this thing in order to get into it. Oh, there we, well, yeah, see, you'll see that it's now, I just cracked it along the, the front there. And like I said a second ago, this is, it's really no big deal. All you really want to make sure you do is don't just damage the, the tape on the inside. But let's see if we can, because if we can salvage this, it'd be best. Oh, I got little pieces flying everywhere. Oh my gosh. Yeah, this is, this is actually really brittle. These TDKs, I've opened so many of these things before. They're usually not this kind of brittle. So I, I kind of was able to wedge the, the screwdriver in there and I'm prying it open. You can kind of see how I did that there. We actually, well, who knows? We'll see where we get with this. So we're just gonna start now wedging it along the side. Oh goodness. <laughs> yeah, 
yeah, this is, it's pretty interesting. We don't have this problem. <coughs> we get a lot of these really big libraries, like I mentioned a second ago, and we don't actually get, we don't have to deal with this a lot. I've, I've over the years we've done this, because we've been doing this for about 20 years, uh, usually no more than about, I mean, no more than 1% of tapes ever need to be fixed. And the main thing that we have to repair in cassette tapes is actually not broken tape. It's the pressure pad. And I've got a few videos where we, where we show that, the process of replacing a pressure pad there. It just kind of got that seam to break. There we go. Uh, yeah, we won't, we'll put it in a new housing. We could actually make this work, but it'll look bad. But, you know, for our purposes here in the studio, all we're really trying to do is get it to the point that it'll play again, and we digitize it, and then a lot of customers don't even want us to send the tapes back. And so, so it, 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 there's, you know, it serves, serves them no purpose to just take up space, and so we just recycle parts and things like that. So other customers that come through then can... Um, when they need pieces and parts, then we can use those. Now, if you see right there, this little this little thing that's kind of like a gasket, you'll see right there. See those ridges? The purpose of those ridges is it's supposed to keep what happened on this tape from happening. They 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 are just kind of there's just this they poke up just a little bit. They're they're embossed or beveled just a tiny bit, on and that's supposed to happen on both sides of the tape. And it's supposed to just kind of put just this tiny little bit of flexible pressure to keep the tape wound correctly. But sometimes if it gets pulled really tight, uh, it'll just yank itself off of the, uh, pull itself off of the uh, off of the spool here and then it just kind of jams down and it kind of makes a mess. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna take this off and flip it over and you can kind of see what we had. So there's all the messed up kind of messy tape right there and we're going to have to flatten that out. By the way, when you do this, wash your hands really well. Uh, I've I found that it's so hard doing this with gloves and or just all tweezers. You just can't do it. At least I can't. So I just wash my hands really well just to kind of keep keep uh, the oils to a minimum. So now I'm going to pull this reel, this spool over, put it right there. And you'll see the inside of this is what an inside of cassette tape looks like. Uh, one of the things that you have here is you have this little, this is a little uh, magnetic shield that just kind of goes right there. Move that in this camera. And then this pressure pad sits like so. And actually it sits on this other side. That's how it's supposed to go. Then this pressure pad sits, I'm gonna get down here so I can see it, sits like that. And then the way this works, is that when you push play on a tape and the spools, the reels start turning, the playhead pushes up and the tape literally gets sandwiched in between the playhead and this pressure pad. And it, and it makes sure that the tape has a really nice solid connection to the, to the playhead. I had a playhead around here that I used to demonstrate this. I, somebody must have grabbed it. Anyway, but that's the idea that you, you push play that playhead comes up like that and then that's why that's really flexible right there so anyway we're not going to keep this though we're going to get a new housing so I'm going to I think we might have one here I'm going to reach over and see if we've got here we go there's one right there just happen to have one ready to go so this is once again this is just an empty <laughs> it's funny we're moving a TDK tape into a Max L and see if it'll actually cooperate since they were competitors of each other. So I'm going to take these screws out and then we'll be able to just set this tape in this housing. And so I'm pulling these screws out. There's usually, if a tape has screws, uh, there's usually five of them, one, two, three, four on the corners, and then there's that fifth one right there in the middle. So I'm going to lift this off. Now, and this is just left over from another client that just once again, they let us, they tell us to keep, you know, keep the stuff. And 
just so that we can use them for other customers just for this purpose. So let's see here. I'm going <laughs> to... And I'm going to see if I can get this, remember where those came from. I think this came from the other side. It actually won't matter which side we put the spools on. It'll work the same. The only reason it will matter is knowing which side is A and side B when we go to digitize it. But for this project, it doesn't matter because there's every tape that we had only had one sermon on it. So when we digitize it, we'll be able to tell which side is side A and side B because what happens a lot of times is when somebody when, when these churches would record sermons, the sermon's not, th these are, this is a, what was it, a 90 minute? Yeah, it was a 90 minute tape and sermons are never 90 minutes. They're usually about, frequently they're somewhere around an hour. So side A will always be completely filled and side B will be partially, there'll be a little bit. And then when we, on the back end, when we go and, and process the audio file, it really doesn't, we'll be able to tell which side is A and which side is B and then we just put it all together in our audio editing software. So it really, it ultimately it doesn't matter which side gets digitized first when we do a project like this because the, the, the person that is on the back end putting these together can see which side is A and which side is B and then it, we just put it together. It's, 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 it's very, you know, we've been doing this for a long time. It's not a very complicated process, but uh, we, we, anyway, we have this kind of all dialed in how to how to make these things work. But look at that, how nicely that just set on there. So we're just gonna move this kind of junk now out of the way. We'll keep that pressure pad though, because we'll probably end up using that for another project at some point. And then what we'll do in these cases where we've just, where the housing had to be kind of wrecked is we'll either put a new label on the new tape that matches what was written down on the old one, or we will actually tape this, or not tape it, take a rubber band once this is put back together and we'll rubber band this to the outside and then we'll just know what was on the tape. And so we're just going to, I'm going to set that in here for now. We're going to have to flip it over a few times, I think, to get this to, to work right. Oh, that little pressure pad fell out right there. Okay. So now we have to deal with this. Look at how it's all bent up. This was the this is what that tape looked like. It was all, remember, it was all kind of wrapped around the spool right there. And so you kind of, you have to guide it through your fingers, and I'll show you how we do that in a second, because then you kind of, this stuff gets hard to work with, and you have to flatten it out. You'll see, you should probably be able to see in this camera how kind of damaged the tape is. And it won't sound, it won't sound great, but you'll be able to hear it. It'll sound okay. And most of the time, when we're doing this type of tape anyway, it's a, it's a person speaking, and so it'll just kind of sound a little, kind of come in and out a little bit while that section of the tape is playing, but that really won't be more than a few seconds. So I'm gonna just try to spool this on a little bit. I'm gonna pull this out flat. Sometimes what we have to do in order to, to spool it on correctly is we'll actually put <coughs> Excuse me, I've got a little little thing in my throat, a little head cold. And I'm going to do that here because and I'm going to show you how this is how I do this because it actually makes it a little little easier, especially when you're dealing with tape that's all um, bent up like that. It's very hard to spool it on like uh, in, in the in, in a case like this because it's wanting to stay wrinkled and twist. So this is going to look a little strange, but this is how I usually do it. So we just put, all we need to do is just, we can leave this reel out. Because all we're really trying to do right now is to get that, and I'm just going to put one screw in just to hold it together. We're just trying to get that really wrinkled part onto this spool in a flat, and then have some more tape over the wrinkled part so it holds it in place, and then we'll put the other spool in and you'll kind of see how you do this. Now, what's going to happen, and I'm going to see if I can focus in on this because that's a little... I, I usually put this between two fingers because I want to monitor it as it goes in and make sure that it stays flat. And you'll see that, you know, this is where all that tape is very wrinkled. You can see that it's even twisted and it's kind of a mess. So what I'll do is I'll just 
either take my fingers or something like this, or actually there's a pen. If you've watched my other videos, this particular big pen fits into these things perfectly. But I'm not going <coughs> to, I don't have those other screws in, so it might kind of push it apart while I'm trying to get it in there. So I'm just going to spin this. Uh, I have to use my finger. And once again, the trick here is you just make sure that when it goes into the housing, into the shell right there, that it stays flat. And you'll see what it's wanting to do. It's wanting to twist up. So we're going to just, yeah, this stuff can get really, just be kind of a, a little bit of a mess. And it's wanting to, you know, go back into that. And it, it may have sat, you know, for all I know, it may have sat like that for years. I'll twist it up in that housing or in the shell but we're, we're getting past it it looks like it actually wasn't a lot of tape that was mixed messed up so now you can see we're back to the the good the tape that's not damaged and we just want to get this spooled on get plenty of the undamaged tape over the damage tape so it'll hold it in place because it's going to want to uh, it's going to want to go back into that shape okay there you go now you see we have this kind of twisted thing here <laughs> So we've got everything kind of in place right there. We get the tape behind those little things, and now we will have a functioning tape. I hope it wasn't blurry for too long. I think it probably was. <clears throat> and there you go. So now the thing is in place, and we put this this side of the shell back on, like so. And now this will, actually, did we, is the pressure pad? Yeah, pressure pad's still in place, the magnetic shield's in place, everything's in place. So we put that shell back on, and we have a functioning, we have a functioning tape now. So we're just gonna put these screws in, and, and once again, this will just, it'll just work. And sometimes what we'll do now in this case too is we'll exercise it, meaning we'll just forward it and rewind it one time just to make sure that, that, that the kind of messed up tape is in there nice and tight. And so when it plays back, it doesn't act strange, nothing weird happens. So there we go. All right, that's it. And then what I'll do now is we'll just take this and I'll get a rubber band, and then I'll take this back to the digitizing, uh, digitizing part of the studio, and then they will, uh, they'll get it processed, and that's really all there is to it. So that's how you fix a tape like that. <coughs> if you like these videos, please like and subscribe to this channel. And of course, if you have tapes like this that need to be fixed, or that not not just need to be fixed but need to be digitized, send them to us. Go to AudioMover.com. And we've been doing this for a couple decades. We're happy to help help you do something like this too. And so, uh, you know, go to audiomover.com, get an order started. Or if you know people that, that have some old audio and videotapes that need to be digitized, because most people have some, uh, let them know about us, please. And uh, we're at audiomover.com, and we'd, uh, we'd love to help out. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that, and have yourself a fantastic day.